In today's A-Level IB Biology video, we're going to be covering in great detail everything relating to a nerve impulse. So we're going to be looking at the resting potential and action potential. So just to give ourselves a slight overview to begin with before we get really into the biology of this, remember a nerve impulse is an electrical impulse carried by a neuron. Secondly, neurons generate and conduct electrical signals. Secondly, well, how do neurons generate and conduct these electrical signals? Well, that's through the pumping of positively charged sodium and potassium ions across their membranes. And just remember for me that Na is the chemical symbol of sodium, K is the chemical symbol of potassium, and you can find that out from the chemistry periodic table. So let's first of all consider the resting potential. Now this is the difference in charge across the membrane when the neuron is not firing. So let's make a quick note, neuron not firing. Writing a definition now of resting potential, we're going to say it's the charge difference across the membrane when the neuron is not firing. And typically this is a minus 70 MV. Notice that the sodium and potassium pump maintains this potential of minus 70 MV. But what does that potential of minus 70 MV actually mean? Well, it really means that the inside of the neuron is more negative relative to the outside. The next question we need to ask ourselves is how the resting potential of minus 70 MV is actually maintained. Notice that this is an active process, so it requires ATP, and that it's carried out by the sodium potassium pump that I keep mentioning. So going into this in greater detail, the pump pumps out three sodium ions for every two potassium ions which are pumped in. This creates an electrochemical gradient whereby the inside of the cell is relatively negative compared with the outside of the cell. And you can see from this diagram from BioNinja that it summarises really nicely what's going on. The fact that we do need ATP, it is an active transport process. Three sodium ions pass out while two potassium ions pass in, creating that electrochemical gradient which I've already mentioned. So let's now consider an action potential, which is really how the nerve impulse travels down a neuron. In terms of writing a brief definition, we're going to say that it's the charge difference across a membrane when a neuron is firing. Notice that it involves two stages, one depolarization, two repolarization. So just look again, the action potential is effectively how the nerve impulse travels down a neuron and it involves two stages, depolarization and repolarization, which is obviously what we now need to discuss. So depolarization refers to a sudden change in membrane potential, usually from a relatively negative potential to a positive potential. So what are the stages involved in depolarization? Well, first of all, a signal initiated at the dendrite of the neuron causes sodium channels to open within the membrane of the neuron. Because there are more sodium ions outside the neuron, the opening of these channels means that they move into the axon by diffusion because that moves from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, remember. This influx of sodium causes the membrane potential to become more positive, and that's what's actually known as depolarization. And so if we look at the potential, remember the resting potential was minus 70 MV, and during depolarization that rises to around 40 MV, give or take, could be plus 30 or plus 50. And another excellent image from BioNinja. So with depolarization, remember that this is an electrical change within the neuron from what was originally a relatively negative charge to a positive charge because that negative charge remember came about during the resting potential. Now if we look at before during the resting potential sodium was moving out, potassium was moving in. Because of that diffusion however of sodium, sodium has now entered the axon membrane meaning that there is a new potential of plus 30. Now the next stage is repolarization. We'll start by defining it. 
This is the restoration of the membrane potential following depolarization. So effectively, you're restoring a negative internal charge. An important thing to note here is that repolarization involves potassium ion channels opening. So let's take a look at the stages. So following an influx of sodium ions, potassium ion channels open, and this occurs within the membrane of the axon. Now, because the potassium ions are more concentrated inside the neuron, when these channels open, clearly the potassium ions can diffuse out of the neuron by diffusion. So the opening of the potassium channels causes a passive movement of potassium ions out of the neuron. And then as a result, potassium ions cause the membrane potential to be more relatively negative. So the key things to take away from repolarization is that the potassium channels open and there's a passive movement of potassium ions out of the neuron, meaning that the membrane potential is more negative. So as we can see from this diagram from BioNinja, after repolarization takes place, we know that the potassium ions have left and therefore we have a more negative membrane potential of minus 80 MV. And that's all due to those potassium channels opening and allowing the efflux, the removal of potassium ions. Next up, the refractory period, let's define it. It's the period of time following a nerve impulse before the neuron is able to fire again. So it's important to be aware of what's the usual circumstance during a resting state. So when the neuron is not firing, well, usually the sodium ions are largely outside the neuron and the potassium ions are mainly inside. And this allows the establishment of the resting potential. But remember, when depolarization occurs, sodium moves in, and during repolarization, potassium moves out, meaning that this distribution is disrupted. And so we're just summarizing that here. So following repolarization, potassium moves out and that leads to a reversal of ion distribution and remember sodium and potassium are both ions and so before the neuron can fire again the resting potential must be restored and that's due to the sodium potassium pump within the membrane that allows the sodium and potassium to flow in opposite directions in order to restore the resting potential so a sodium potassium pump allows the movement of ions. So remember that will involve sodium ions moving out and potassium ions moving back in in order to restore the resting potential. So looking again using the BioNinja excellent website, take a look. In the refractory period, this is when the neuron is unable to fire and that's because the ion distribution is being restored. So we're going to have sodium ions moving out and potassium ions moving back in in order to restore that resting potential of minus 70 MV. Mm -hmm.